Hey, ChatGPT. I recently came across an article discussing the relationship between modern physics and ancient religious texts, the Quran. I'm really curious about how it connects theoretical warp drives with the Islamic concept of I, Al, Ard, the folding the earth. Can you break down the main points of the article for me, especially how it ties these seemingly different ideas together? Cleophy, the article explores how theoretical warp drive physics relates to Tael, Ard, the folding of the earth. It discusses warp theories by Alcubierre and Lentz for faster-than-light travel and compares them to Quranic verses, like Solomon's throne being brought instantly. So, there are similarities between the two concepts? I mean, how do the mechanisms of warp drive and Te Al, Ard, the folding the earth, actually compare? Are they based on similar principles? Or is it more about the idea of instant travel? I'm really curious about how these ancient texts might resonate with modern physics in that way. Cleophy, exactly. It suggests that both concepts might align, proposing further research on similar ideas in other traditions and the connection between mind, energy, and space-time. Fascinating. Thanks for the quick summary. Let's move on to the deep dive with Jack and Wilson. Hey everyone, before we get started, I noticed in my YouTube channel analytics that many of you watching aren't subscribed. If you could do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. It motivates me and helps the channel grow, so I can create more videos like the one you're about to see. Also, as some of you requested, my team has launched a website where you can read my books and find transcripts of all my videos in the form of small booklets. The link is in video description. We're working hard to produce informative videos daily, along with books and transcripts. I'd love your help in spreading Dawa, calling to Allah's message. Please click the join button to show your support. Now, let's dive in. Hey everyone, and welcome to this deep dive. And this one is especially for you because we're going to be talking about something really fascinating. We're going to be talking about warp drives and uh, teleportation and the Quran. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty wild, right? And this is based on an article on the Muslim Vibe website called Theoretical Warp Drive, Teleportation and the Quran. Mm. And get this, the article suggests that there may be some sort of alignment between modern warp drive theory and ancient Islamic descriptions of something called allure, which means folding up of the earth. It really makes you wonder how ancient ideas about the universe might connect with what we're discovering now in modern physics. Exactly. So first, can you just give us a quick breakdown of warp drives? It sounds like pure science fiction, but the article suggests there's real science behind it. Yeah, it does sound like something out of Star Trek, but it is actually rooted in real physics. Um, in Einstein's theory of general relativity, to be exact, the key with warp drives is they don't actually make a spaceship go faster than light through space. They actually warp They warp the fabric of space-time itself. Okay, hold on. Warping space-time. Can you give me a visual for that? Okay. So picture a spaceship sitting on a stretched-out sheet. Now, to get to a distant point on that sheet, you wouldn't travel across the whole thing. Instead, you could just warp the sheet itself, bringing the destination closer. Oh, okay, I see. That's basically what a warp drive wants to do with space-time. It creates what's called a warp bubble that moves the ship forward by contracting the space in front of it and expanding the space behind it. Oh, wow. So the ship isn't moving faster than light. It's taking a shortcut through warp space-time. Exactly. And the mathematical model for this was proposed by Miguel Alcubierre, a physicist back in 1994, and it's called the Alcubierre metric. The Alcubierre metric. Okay, got it. So could this Al-Al thing from the Quran actually be talking about something similar to warp drive theory? Well, that is where things get really interesting. So al al translates to folding up of the earth, and you see it in the Quran in a story about King Solomon. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Solomon asks his court, who can bring him the Queen of Sheba's throne, like instantly? And someone with knowledge from a divine book just does it. Like it's nothing. So you're saying this could be describing something like a warp drive. It's definitely possible, but to really understand this idea of ALR, we need to go deeper into Islamic tradition, huh. uh, more specifically the Hadith literature. Okay. These contain narrations attributed to imams that help explain it a bit more. For example, Imam Muhammad al-Bakir says that a specific letter from God's name was used to make the land just disappear from between the throne and Solomon. Yeah. And then there's another imam, Ali al-Naki, who uses these words, pierced and expanded to talk about what happened to the land. Wait, pierced and expanded? That sounds a lot like the contracting and expanding space-time we were talking about with the warp drives. It does, doesn't it? Like, the land between Solomon and the throne was compressed, allowing for instant travel, and then it just went back to normal. 
Yeah, and the thing is that the manuscripts that have these narrations in them are way older than the warp drive theory, like centuries older. For example, the book Sha'ul al mm -hmm. has one of these stories, and it goes all the way back to the 17th century. Right, so it's not like these stories were made up to try and match the warp drive theory. Yeah, exactly. So it seems like the idea of manipulating space-time has been around for a lot longer than we might think. It really has. Okay, so the article also mentions another warp drive theory, Something about superheated plasma. Oh, yeah. So physicist Eric Lentz has this model using things called solitons, which are basically waves that hold their shape as they move. Okay. His theory says that if you make a soliton out of superheated plasma, it could actually warp space-time like you need for a warp drive, and you wouldn't even need exotic matter. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. But I have to ask, is any of this even remotely possible? Like actually building a warp drive? Well, that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? So we have the Alcubierre metric and Lenz's theory, which give us some theoretical frameworks, but there's still some big challenges. Like what? Well, the Alcubierre drive needs this thing called exotic matter, which has negative mass and negative energy density. Yeah, negative mass, it's like completely hypothetical, but it's really important for this whole warp drive idea. It's wild how it kind of makes you rethink everything you thought you knew about physics. It really does, and we have never actually seen anything like it in the universe, and even if we did find it, the amount of energy it would take to make a warp bubble that's stable is insane. Like some people oh, think you. it would take more energy than exists in the entire observable universe. Wow, that's hard to even wrap your head around. So even though the theory is super cool, it doesn't sound like we're going to be building warp drives anytime soon. Probably not, but yeah. hey, you never know what the future holds, right? Science is full of surprises, and with this connection we're seeing between these old texts and modern physics, who knows what amazing discoveries are waiting for us. It's like we're rediscovering ancient knowledge through modern science. Exactly, and maybe that's the key to understanding the universe and where we fit in. You know, this whole thing about warp drives, teleportation, and the Quran is just one example of what happens when science and spirituality come together. You know, this reminds me of that movie Interstellar. Remember how they show a wormhole as a shortcut through space-time? It makes you think it may be ALR could be something like that. That's a great analogy, and it shows how these ideas that used to only exist in science fiction or ancient texts are now becoming actual scientific questions. This is why I love these deep dives. We take these big scientific concepts and connect them with ancient wisdom. It's like we're weaving together different ways of understanding things. And that's what makes it so cool. It really challenges how we think about knowledge and where we might find the answers to some of the universe's biggest mysteries. I'm really curious about this idea of consciousness and how it interacts with space-time. It sounds kind of mystical. But the connection to warp drives is really interesting. I know the article mentions it, but is there anything more you can tell me about it now? Well, the article suggests that the huge amount of energy you need for a warp drive might actually be accessible to a mind that's developed enough. Like maybe instead of just brute force, we need to figure out how consciousness works with reality to unlock this power. So if we could tap into that deeper level of consciousness, we might be able to actually control space time. That's incredible and a little scary, to be honest. It definitely pushes the limits of what we think is possible. And speaking of pushing limits, the article also suggests looking at other traditions like Judaism to see if they have any similar concepts to A.L. Arth. Oh, really? Like what? Like in Jewish mysticism, there's this idea of kefetzat haderik, which means contraction of the path. Wow. So the idea of changing space for travel isn't just in Islam. That's fascinating to see how different cultures thought about these things. Yeah, it seems like people have always been interested in going beyond the limits of space and time. Definitely. Well, we'll explore those ideas more after we take a quick break to let all this sink in. So before the break, we were talking about how other traditions also have concepts that are similar to A.L. Lart. We were talking about this Jewish idea of kefetzat haderach. Yeah, this contraction of the path thing. What can you tell me about that? Well, kefetzat haderach, it's like A.L. Lart. It describes this miraculous shortening of distance. And in Jewish mystical texts, it's usually attributed to people who have reached like a high spiritual level, people who can actually bend reality. Hmm. Some people even say that it involves some kind of folding or warping of space, just like what we've been talking about with warp drives. So we're seeing this idea of manipulating space to travel in different cultures and spiritual traditions. It makes you wonder if maybe these ancient mystics were onto something really profound about how reality works. 
It really does make you think, you know, if any of this is actually true, it means that we don't really understand the universe as well as we think we do, and maybe there are ways to interact with reality that we can't even imagine yet. This is really making me think about what's actually possible. And the article also talks about this idea of consciousness interacting with space-time. It's like a whole other level of exploration. It really is. It pushes us to the edge of what we know, but that's where things get really interesting, right? Where science and spirituality start to come together. Totally. It's like peeking behind the curtain of reality, getting a glimpse of something truly amazing. Exactly. And this idea that the mind can access huge amounts of energy, maybe even shape reality itself, it's not really a new idea. Mystics and philosophers have been thinking about this for a long time. That's true. But what's really cool is that now we're starting to see hints of this in modern physics that kind of support these old ideas, like those stories about an ALR and the idea of warping space-time to travel far distances. It feels like ancient wisdom and modern science are starting to come together. Exactly. And that's what makes this so exciting. It reminds us that we don't have all the answers. And the universe is way more mysterious and awesome than we often think. So where does this leave us? Like, if someone's listening, and they've just gone on this crazy journey with us through warp drives and teleportation and the Quran. What are the key takeaways? I think the most important thing is to just have a sense of wonder and curiosity to remember that there's so much we still don't know about the universe and the power of human consciousness. Absolutely. It's like we've opened this door to a whole new world of possibilities. Exactly. And I think it's also important to think about knowledge in a more holistic way. We've seen how ancient wisdom and modern science, which people often think of as separate things, can actually work together and make each other stronger. Like we've been saying, it's all about weaving together different ways of understanding to create something even more beautiful and complete. Perfectly said. And finally, I hope this encourages people to keep exploring. This is just the beginning. There are so many books, articles, documentaries, you name it, that can take you deeper into these subjects. This has definitely made me want to learn more, and I'm sure our listeners feel the same way. <laughs> I bet they do. This kind of exploration really makes you want to understand the mysteries of the universe and where we fit in. The article also talks about checking out other Quran verses that might hint at these concepts. Yeah, it says to look for verses that use similar language to the ones we've already discussed, especially those that talk about space and time being manipulated. For example, verse 21.104 talks about the day when heaven is going to be rolled up like a scroll. Rolled up like a scroll. That's some powerful imagery. It really is. And it makes you wonder if there's a deeper meaning there. Maybe it's hinting at the idea that reality itself can be folded, bent, or changed in ways we can't even comprehend. That's incredible. It's like these ancient texts are giving us glimpses into a reality that's beyond our current understanding. You know, all this talk about space, time, and energy. It makes me wonder, could we ever actually harness this power ourselves? That's a great question, one that we could probably spend hours talking about. It just shows that there's always more to learn and explore. The journey never really ends. And that's what makes it so amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this incredible journey into the world of science and spirituality. The pleasure was all mine. And to all of you listening out there, keep your minds open, stay curious, and never stop being amazed by the universe. You know, that image of heaven being rolled up like a scroll is really powerful. It makes you wonder what other secrets might be hidden in these ancient texts, just waiting for us to smear them out. It really does. It's like we're taking what these ancient and modern thinkers have learned and using it to look into the unknown. And you mentioned exploring other traditions. Are there any that stand out to you when it comes to this topic? Well, besides the Jewish mystical tradition we talked about, I find the ancient Vedic texts from India really interesting. They describe these things called cities. Cities. Yeah, they're like supernatural powers, and mm -hmm. some of them seem to be about manipulating space and time. For instance, there's Mahima, which lets someone make their body huge, and then there's Anima, which lets them shrink down to like a tiny size. Yeah. And even though these abilities are usually interpreted metaphorically, they could also be seen as hints that these ancient people understood reality in a way that we're only starting to grasp now. It's amazing how these ideas show up in different cultures and across different times. It seems like people have always been fascinated by the idea of going beyond our limits and exploring the universe. It really does, and it shows how important it is to be open-minded. When we're looking at these things, we might find that the lines between science, spirituality, and ancient wisdom are blurrier than we thought. It's like we're realizing that there are lots of different ways to learn and understand the world. And this whole exploration of warp drives, teleportation, 
And the Quran is a perfect example of that. It really is. And for everyone listening, we hope this has sparked your curiosity and inspired you to keep exploring these fascinating connections. We've covered a lot today, from the physics of warp drives to these ancient interpretations of ALR. So what are the key takeaways for our listeners after going on this whirlwind tour? Well, I think the most important thing is to remember that the universe is way more mysterious and amazing than we often think. There's so much we still don't know. And what we do know is always changing. That's for sure. And I think it's good to be okay with that uncertainty, to approach these topics with a sense of wonder and be willing to question what we think we know. Exactly. And I also think it's important to remember that knowledge can come from different places. We've seen how ancient wisdom and modern science, which people often see as separate things, can actually inform and strengthen each other. So don't be afraid to look at different viewpoints and see where they connect. Like we've been saying, weaving together different ways of understanding creates something much richer and more beautiful. Exactly. And lastly, I would say keep exploring. This is just the start. There are tons of books, articles, documentaries out there that can take you even deeper into these topics. This deep dive has definitely left me wanting to learn more, and I'm sure our listeners feel the same way. I wouldn't be surprised. Exploring these ideas really makes you want to understand the mysteries of the universe and where we fit in. As we wrap up this deep dive into the world of warp drives, teleportation, and the Quran, Let's leave our listeners with one last thought-provoking question. If these ancient descriptions of manipulating space-time are even a little bit true, what does that tell us about what's possible in the future and the limits of what humans can understand? That's a great question to think about. It reminds us that we're always discovering new things. There's always more to learn, explore, and wonder about. And on that note, we'll say goodbye. For now, we hope you enjoyed this journey as much as we did. It's been a pleasure exploring these ideas with you. Until next time, keep your minds open, stay curious, and never lose your sense of wonder. Thank you for joining us for today's podcast. I hope you've gained some valuable insights. If you're a truth seeker, yearning for divine light and ready to step out of darkness, now is your moment. The truth is that Allah is the one and only creator of the universe. He has sent over 124,000 messengers and prophets to guide humanity, starting with Adam and culminating with the final messenger, Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon them all. If you resonate with this message, you might be ready to embrace Islam. Simply recite the Shahada, the Islamic Declaration of Faith. For further support, feel free to join our WhatsApp group. You can send us a private message there. The link is in the video description. Don't wait until it's too late. We look forward to connecting with you soon.